Talk Radio with Todd Marquardt is sponsored by the Marquardt Law Firm and does not attempt to solve your individual legal problems upon the basis of the information contained herein. Instead, contact an attorney to discuss the specific facts and circumstances of your unique situation. The views and opinions of this program do not reflect the views of the Salem Media Group. It's time for Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Todd Marquardt, attorney at law in Texas. If you're a millionaire or a thousandaire, Talk Law Radio is now on the air. Call in with your business law question, your elder law question. Veteran aid, Medicaid, build a business to get paid. 210-308-8867. Or ask a question online at marquardtlawfirm.com. That's M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T lawfirm.com. And now, it's Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Welcome to Talk Law Radio with your host, Todd Marquardt, sponsored by Marquardt Law Firm. I'm Tyrone Marquardt, guest host and director of operations for Marquardt Law Firm, also Todd's brother. I'm Todd Marquardt, your host and attorney with Marquardt Law Firm. Last week, we talked about the SECURE Act and how it could affect your retirement. Mr. Marquardt, what's our mission for Talk Law Radio? The mission of Talk Law Radio is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots by listening to me talk about the law on the radio. The State Bar of Texas is the state agency that governs our law license, and the State Bar wants attorneys to inform the public about the law But because legal advice must be tailored to the specific circumstances of each case and laws are ever changing, nothing provided herein should be used as a substitute for the advice of competent legal counsel. So contact an attorney at Marquardt Law Firm, which sponsors this show. Have an initial consultation to find out if Marquardt Law Firm is the right law firm for you. Before we get started talking about the law, let's begin with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day and for all the gifts and blessings that you give to us. Please forgive us for our sins, for our mistakes, for doing the wrong thing or failing to do your will. Please help Command Sergeant Major Retired Steve Lewis, Captain Retired Tamika Carter Lee, Tyrone and me to give good information to the listeners about Easter Seals New Beginnings program today. Help us to use the gifts and talents you have provided for the good of your people, for our own good, and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So what laws are we going to discuss today? We're going to be talking about the Easter Seals with uh, Steve, George, and Tamika. And we're going to be talking about Uh, how the Easter Seals got its name, how you can contact Easter Seals, and some frequently asked questions. Then we'll get into how Easter Seals helps military veterans, and especially the New Beginnings program. So let's find out who our guests are. Steve, will you give us uh, some background about yourself? Sure. Uh, Thanks for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, again, my name is Steve Lewis, and uh, I just retired in 2017 after 28 years, four months, and two weeks of service. But who's counting? Uh, who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I moved to San Antonio and love it and decide uh, 28 years is enough, and um, I'm making San Antonio my home. That's awesome. You look so young. I wouldn't have ever guessed that you served that long. Well, the face might look young, but the body is different. (laughs) Okay. I have a different idea. Yeah. The body's pretty beat up from uh, those 28 years of uh, being an infantryman. So, um, yeah, um, San Antonio is is where I'm going to be for the long haul. And you're on the staff for Easter Seals, is that That, right? That is correct. And what is your position there? So I'm an uh, instructor slash facilitator. I, I actually, out of the phase one, so there's three phases, I am one of the instructors for the phase one, uh, part of the, uh, the new beginning program. And how did you 
come to obtain employment there? Well, um, interesting. Good question. Um, I came through the program myself, so I did uh, nine months in the program, and uh, like with everything else, had no idea what I was gonna do. You know, I left the military and I had no purpose. So I came to Easter Seals and found a purpose. That's awesome. And, and uh, you know, they asked me whether I want to stay on the staff, and I and I could not pass up that opportunity to give back uh, to the program and to the veterans that follow on. Okay, before we get into what the program is and how it helps, I wanted to find out a little bit about Tamika. Will you? Uh, share something about yourself. Yes, good evening and thank you for having me. I did 20 years, seven months and six days in the Army. I retired last year and I'm enjoying retirement. I'm also, as of right now, as of today, I do attend Easter Seals and I am a client at Easter Seals. Okay. And are you from San Antonio? I am not from San Antonio. I am from Monroe, Louisiana, but San Antonio is now my home. That is where we decided to retire. I find once people come to San Antonio, it's hard for them to leave. It's True. a great weather you have here, man. <laughs> <laughs> and George, can he borrow your mic? Will you share something about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, George Taylor. Matt, I retired as a Master Sergeant. I served uh, 25 years active duty. Uh, combined with my National Guard reserve time, 36 years. So I've, wow. I've given a lot of time. Like uh, It's always a competition, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Steve is a little more successful. He made the rank of CSM. <laughs> but uh, uh, y yes, uh, um, I've been around the block a bit. So uh, I'm also a, a client <laughs> for Easter Seals. And uh, uh, I'm so happy it... it it kind of found me and um, got a chance to uh, be a client there and uh, it's changed a lot uh, it's changed my life uh, I've, I've acquired a job that because of Easter Seals uh, I'm, I'm gonna be working for the VA helping other vets great great yeah thank thank you all for being here uh, we, we hope that what you share today will help others find the same success that you have. So I want to get into what Easter Seals is. Um, do, do any of you know that far back? Because I, what I read about Easter Seals is that it's a it's a hundred years old. And that's, that's a lot of history for anybody to know, even if you work there. So I, I did some of my own research. I can talk about the history, but if you know something, Please chime in. We'll correct you if your research turned out to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I learned was that uh, Easter Seals is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, which means that it's tax exempt with the IRS and uh, they can accept uh, contributions and they don't have to pay taxes on it. And if, if you contribute to a 501c3, then it's eligible for a tax deduction. Uh, but you have to get with your CPA uh, to find out if, if you are eligible to deduct uh, charitable contributions. So I was interested really in the name Easter Seals because I didn't, I didn't know where it came from. And so what, what I learned was that Easter the Seals was a stamp-like seal that was created in 1934 to raise money for services benefiting children with disabilities. Am I right so far? That, that is correct. So have you seen one of these seals? I have, and uh, I think the uh, seal is, is evolved, if I may say that. Okay. But I have seen the original seal. Okay. And like I said before, it's a hundred years and what Easter Seals is known for is uh, serving as an indispensable resource for individuals with disabilities, a uh, resource for veterans, a resource for seniors and, and families. And it's a nationwide organization, right? That is correct. 
and San Antonio is like a chapter or a branch. How do you? And, and San Antonio is is a chapter, and um, since I think 1988, uh, okay, it's been in San Antonio. Great, and so I have the mission here. Uh, I guess there's uh, 69 other chapters or affiliates around the nation uh, serving 1.5 million people through programs, uh, services, workforce development, uh, adult daycare. So basically helping people with disabilities and, and their families to help cope with those disabilities as well, is that right? Yeah, that is correct. And uh, as you know, that uh, at the beginning, uh, veterans was not part of the clientele. And uh, since 2004, Easter Seals, uh, or the new beginning uh, portion of Easter Seals, started to serve uh, our veterans. Okay. And active duty, uh, I may say, too, because we do have some active duty members who uh, come to, through the program. Do you know much about how somebody would qualify to even receive services? Do they have to file an application? Does everybody, you know, if you just have to want to? Are there requirements? Well, the requirements is that uh, the veteran has to uh, get with their vocational rehab counselor. And, and within with the folk rehab counselor and the veteran, uh, they will uh, come up with a plan and, and figure out whether Easter Seals was something that they can, you know, that can benefit the veteran. Once that's done, um, Easter, uh, the veteran would, uh, would come visit uh, with us and we'll uh, have one of our phase two uh, clients who are veterans who are actually going through the program right now, you know, give them a tour of the building, talk to them, answer any questions that they may have, and uh, once that's done, then it's up to the, uh, the, the veteran to make that decision. Even if they're toward the facilities, uh, they're still under no obligation to attend New Beginnings. So it starts with a referral from the vocation, vocational rehab. That's correct. And then there's a shadow day. That's correct. <laughs> and, and then they, they still get to decide and whether they, they get want to, to do decide it. whether they that's something they want to do. So we so the New Beginnings program is just a part of the Easter Seals overall program. Overall program, that is correct. And that is uh, one of the parts that deals with veterans. Okay. okay. Before we get into it we need to <clears throat> excuse me we need to take a commercial break uh, when we come back uh, we'll talk to George uh, he'll tell us a little bit more so stay tuned Law Talk Radio with Todd Marquardt is sponsored by the Marquardt Law Firm and does not attempt to solve your individual legal problems upon the basis of the information contained herein. Instead, contact an attorney to discuss the specific facts and circumstances of your unique situation. The views and opinions of this program do not reflect the views of the Salem Media Group. It's time for Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Todd Marquardt, attorney at law in Texas. If you're a millionaire or a thousandaire, Talk Law Radio is now on the air. Call in with your business law question, your elder law question. Veteran aid, Medicaid, build a business to get paid. 210-308-8867. Or ask a question online at marquardtlawfirm.com. That's M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T lawfirm.com. And now, it's Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Welcome to back to Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. George, uh, tell us a little bit more about the New Beginnings program with Easter Seals. I, I just wanted to touch on the fact that um, how I came to Easter Seals is because I, I, I do have uh, some um, disabilities. You know, whether they were acquired in, in training throughout my career in the uh, in the army, uh, or even in combat, but we, you you know, uh, we all have some sort of not all of us, but there's quite a few of us that have all sorts of disabilities. It could be even down to learning disabilities, physical disabilities, 
but that's how I, I came to know Easter Seals, and it's, uh, it's been a blessing. Okay, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And Tyrone, you were uh, summarizing the, how Easter Seals and, and the, the program work together. Uh, why don't you go through that again? So what I understand is Easter Seals is the overall program and the New Beginnings program is lies underneath that. That's correct. Um, Easter Seals is a program that helps people with disabilities and from what I read is um, there's no specific type of disability. It, they really help everybody with all disabilities. That's correct. And they you said that they were helping veterans now, but is the New Beginnings program lim limited to only mi military veterans? Um, no, it's not. Uh, like I said, it's it has um, we have the veteran side of the house, and then we have uh, uh, normal. Well, not normal, but we have civilians. Excuse me, civilians who uh, who is in the program, the New Beginnings program, and most of. Uh, civilians they are on the autism spectrum side of this I mean autism spectrum disorder um, so what that also does is uh, both the veterans and uh, our civilian clients are in the same room they're in the same classroom okay so before we start talking about the details of what's in the program I just want to recap uh, that the New Beginnings program is to help people with disabilities, whether they're military veterans or civilians with uh, disabilities. And we, we know that y'all have been in the program and you have been helped by the program. Um, Tamika, would, would you share something about um, your experience in the program? Sure. Um, as far as my experience in the program and how Easter Seals has helped me is that, first of all, transitioning from the military is, is, is scary, you know, for most veterans because it's what we've been doing. I mean, as you guys have been listening, you know, I've had 20 years, you're talking about somebody that's 28 years, someone that's 36 years total in time, that's all that we know. So when you're transitioning out of the military, it's scary. And so to have a program in place um, that is there to to help assist you through those times where you're kind of uncertain of, of what your next step is going to be. You know, it, it gives you that opportunity and that time to kind of relax a little, figure out, you know, what it is that you want to do. So with, along with your uh, vocational rehabilitation counselor, you guys would dev uh, devise a plan together, you know, with the time frame that you're in the program, which is around six to nine months. In that time frame, you're able to figure out kind of what it is that you want to do. Is that the first phase, or is that all three phases, six to nine months? So, I'll let Steve answer that question. So, this is the whole program, the whole phase. Okay. So, uh, each phase is about three months, so that's six to nine months. And then it, it, it has to do with how, how fast or uh, uh, what issues that the veteran has to deal with, you know. So, you have that six to nine month period. Uh, and, and that's what that's what I want to just say that I think that's what makes Easter Seals a little bit different mm -hmm. because you transition without the rush okay you don't you don't have that rush I have to get it done six months six to nine months is is a decent amount of time to slowly transition so what makes this program different from other veteran services you know like put on from the by the VA or by other veteran service organizations and, and like I said if I may go back to uh, what I just mentioned a couple moments ago it it gives you that ability to slowly transition into the civilian workforce or to go to school whatever the veteran decides and goes back to the mixture the, the, of the classrooms, the dynamics of having the veteran with our other clients and the different personalities. And you're not only dealing with a now veteran who is thinking the same way you are thinking. Now you're, uh, you're encountering different personalities, which 
uh, you're probably going to uh, encounter once you go out to the workforce. And, and that's when veterans and some of the civilians would interact together. Yes. Practicing. Typically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's daily. Mm -hmm. What a great program. You know, you're transitioning into civilian, working with civilians. Mm -hmm. I could see how that could be beneficial. It, it, if I may just, just a little bit, because the one, one of the things that as, as, as veterans is that when we transition out of active duty, we, we expect the civilian population to confirm to us because <laughs> that's, that's the way we are. We want you to confirm to our standard. Uh, and including myself, we find it really quick that I that's wish not that we happen. could. <laughs> we don't know anything about it. But we don't know that. You know? <laughs> but we, you know, we have to find out that it's the other way around. Well, it's it's a different culture. It, it is. And so it would be like going from any culture to any other different culture. There's mm -hmm. got to be some type of transition. Of course, uh, but how the transition happened can have a lasting impact on that individual, whether it's slow uh, or it's a fast transition. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go to a, you go to a five day workshop, I call it, when you exit the military, but you get so much information and a lot of times you don't retain, you know, because it's all happening so fast. We call it being fed through a fire hose. <laughs> yeah. Drinking water through a fire hose. So that's how it's different. Instead of a five-day workshop, it, it's a, a longer process. Longer process, and it gives you base a classroom environment. You're dealing with the civilian population in a classroom environment. Okay. So and it's not only just the transition. I mean, which is a major, major part of of, of how it's beneficial and it's different than any other program that we've been in, but also. Uh, within the program itself in different phases there are different lessons that are being taught and discussions that are had that is very helpful to the veterans and the TWC that are involved in the classroom and I found that more helpful for me because it, it the lessons that are being taught in the program it teaches you just how to see things as they are it, you're getting to know yourself better why you act the way you act why do you react the way that you act and why do you think the way that you think and you know, maybe it'll give you just a, a way of, of maybe dealing with things a little bit differently. So that would be helpful for you in the civilian workplace. George, anything you want to add to that? Yes, I um, wanted to say that uh, when I first got into the program, uh, the first day, I, I wanted to run out of there. I mean, I really didn't want to be there. Um, I felt frustrated and um, but I knew I had to come back, and uh, within three days, I realized, I think this is good for me. And even at home, my wife started to see the difference in my behavior. So, so uh, I, I've got to, I attribute that to working with the civilians as well. Of course, being with my fellow vets, mm -hmm. as I call them, my battle buddies, mm -hmm. and then I have, you know, uh, Steve as an instructor who I, I can relate to him talking to me and, and knowing, understanding what I've been through. And so that, uh, how do you say, uh, it validated, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so I I was I started to listen a whole lot more. And, and like Tamika says that you just, you, you, the little tools they, they're, they're teaching you in class, you start applying them and working with the civilians, it teaches you, it, it teaches you how to apply them right there on the spot. So, can we talk about some of those tools, like from phase one? Do you remember, Tamika? Yes. Um, actually, you know, George. You know, George said it took you what three days. Yeah. yeah, it took me a couple of months, but I'm there. And um, one thing that they talk about the life laws, and um, and Steve can talk more, speak more on it. But it was one thing that really stuck out for me, and that was a lesson on forgiveness. Oh, wow. And that was something big and major for me because, you know, being a combat medic for so many years and then being a nurse um, and just dealing with death and, and, and seeing people and people you wish that you could have saved or why why this one, why were you able to save this one and not that one? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of guilt that you carry. 
and and you you, you want to ask for forgiveness but sometimes you can't ask for forgiveness because maybe that person is no longer here right. you know or maybe they're way in iraq somewhere and you will never see them ever again in your life but it's, it's etched in your memory mm -hmm. so and also just the things that people have done to you that maybe it has affected you greatly so with the lesson on forgiveness, you know, uh, I used to think that forgiveness, if I forgave him, you know, I was accepting that, uh, that what the person did to me was okay mm -hmm. and giving them a break. But it's not about that. You know, forgiveness is for you. You know, and once you get that in your mind that forgiveness is for you, you know, and I accept what happened or what I couldn't change, you know, and I could just move on with my life. So that was something that really affected me. And if I don't leave with anything else from Easter Seals, it made me see that. That's pretty powerful. That's a lot. What are some other tools that that y'all learned in phase one? Well, I hope uh, Tamika used her forgiveness for me for touching her. <laughs> 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 so, uh, with, like Tamika said, you know, the life, life skills, um, and uh, we do a lot of anger, uh, class anger management. Uh, we basically kind of, uh, we talk to the veterans about how to identify why they're feeling the way they are feeling. And not only that individual, but others, family members, it could be kids, it could be friends, or just someone you meet on the street, just to identify, you know, uh, maybe, at this time, I need to walk away from this individual, you know, and, and so we give them that those tools. We also, um, and my favorite is finding your purpose. Let's get to your favorite after this break. We've got to take another commercial. Uh, you're with uh, Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Law Talk Radio with Todd Marquardt is sponsored by the Marquardt Law Firm and does not attempt to solve your individual legal problems upon the basis of the information contained herein. Instead, contact an attorney to discuss the specific facts and circumstances of your unique situation. The views and opinions of this program do not reflect the views of the Salem Media Group. It's time for Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Todd Marquardt, attorney at law in Texas. If you're a millionaire or a thousandaire, Talk Law Radio is now on the air. Call in with your business law question, your elder law question. Veteran aid, Medicaid, build a business to get paid. 210-308-8867. Or ask a question online at marquardtlawfirm.com. That's M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T, lawfirm.com. And now it's Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. We're back with Marquardt Law Firm and Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt talking about Easter Seals and the New Beginnings program. Thank you. Uh, Steve, you were going to say what your favorite skill was? Purpose. My favorite is purpose, finding your purpose. Um, is that in the first phase? That is in the first okay. phase. Uh, because uh, what I've seen is uh, after you do, like Tamika was saying, after you serve for 30, 20 years, you, you, and then you'll change, you kind of lose your identity. Mm -hmm. You know, you have no identity. In my case, I had no identity. Now what? You know, that moment where you stand and look at yourself like, okay, so what now? You know, I'm still young, I can do stuff, but what do I do? So finding your purpose and, and, and veteran understanding that you had a purpose on active duty, but it's okay, you can find another purpose. And Easter Seal, in my case, helped me to find my purpose. And my purpose, I think, is doing what I'm doing right here, right now, assisting veterans to make that transition. How about you, Tamika? Did you find your purpose? Actually, I I'm still looking. Okay. Uh, for my purpose. Um, that's okay. I I I love to help. I hope help. that's okay. I love to help people, <laughs> um, and that's you know that's what my background is is healthcare. But um, as far as being out in the military, I, I, I'm coming up on a year of being retired, and I'm still like, what, what's next? And that's why this program is so wonderful because it allows you that time to figure out what's next, like what it is that you want to want to do, and whatever I want to do, I want to be passionate at doing it. Well, I have a suggestion. Yes. 
My wife is a labor and delivery nurse. <laughs> <laughs> she says that there's more babies in San Antonio that they can keep up with. So if you like babies, that would be one route you could take. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, George, uh, how about you? Did you find your purpose or are you still looking for it? I, it matter of fact, it, yes, I, I, it was by accident. I, at first, uh, I was in the program about three months. I always knew I liked aviation. I, not, not like, I love aviation. Anything that flies, I love. So I said, I don't know if I could do that. And, um, you know, if they're going to let me do that. So uh, I, I, I started to pursue it. I, I went through all the gauntlet. I got accepted to everything I applied for. I was excited. Uh, they even gave me a start date. And then I got a letter from the FAA, and they said, "Not, nah, you can't fly." Oh. So, uh, of course, it's some of my uh, my disabilities that mm -hmm. keeping me grounded. So I started I started backsliding into a kind of depressive. I bet. And isolating myself again, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And that's when uh, I was approached by another ser sergeant major that I served with, and. Uh, he walked up to me and says, I found the job for you. <laughs> and of course I was like, oh, I don't know about that, you know, but uh, it, it is, it's kind of like what Steve's doing. I'm gonna be serving other vets. And now, I'm, you know, I, I, I may have lost my aviation dream per se, but I found another one. I think I'm, I'm like Tamika as well. I like to serve others. I'm also like Steve, so, and then I'm gonna directly affect my vets and I, I'm gonna be able to even direct them to the Easter Seals. Okay, Which got, has awesome. me excited and I could bring it and carry it over to my church. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if anybody knows, but we have over 3,500 homeless vets in San Antonio alone. Oh my goodness. Just to let you know. So there's a lot to reach out to. Tyrone, you had a question at the break. How much does it cost to be a part of Easter Seals in the New Beginnings program? Um, is there a fee, and what what uh, what what can people expect that, that want to be in this program? Yeah. Well, the program uh, Easter Seals or, or New Beginnings program it costs the veteran absolutely nothing, and I always tell my veterans all it's going to cost you it's Getting up in the morning, getting dressed, and putting gas in your car. That's all it's going to cost you. Tamika, so. what did you have to pay? I had to, monetary-wise, nothing. But if you really want to become a better person and you're really seeking to improve on whatever it is you need to improve on, I think this is the program. Matter of fact, I know that this is the program for you because, again, it allows you with the lessons to actually see, you know, who you are for what you are and whether or not you want to change it or you want to continue doing it or going about the way that you've been going for how many years of your life so i just think that if you want to attend a program you have to be ready to put in the work and actually you know want to accept what's being given to you and try to use it to better your life you have to be open-minded you somewhat. have to be open-minded and um it's I mean, you, you think of uh, Michael Jackson, the man in the mirror, when you're looking at the mirror, it's like, yeah, this, this is you, you know, so do you like what you see? And maybe you hear things about yourself that you didn't want to hear? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That is, that is absolutely true. So Tamika's been in the first phase, and, and you've been through all three phases, right, Steve? Yes. And uh, so what's the second phase like? How is it different? So the second phase build a little bit on your, on the first phase. Um, in the first phase, of course, you get that veteran in their raw, they're in their element. And uh, I can say, yeah, as the phase one instructor, I get the brunt of it. <laughs> you know, because I'm the first guy they see. Um, but uh, once to get to the second phase, we talk about self-esteem. We talk a little bit more about anger management. We talk a little bit more about the communication piece because communication uh, on active duty is a little bit different, just a little bit different <laughs> than a civilian, you know. And, um, and, and, and in that case, you have that in your face, 
you know, that I hired a veteran it. one time, and <laughs> I, I told him at our office, it, it's our policy to be frank and honest. And he said, can I be brutally honest? <laughs> and I said, please don't. <laughs> around here, we beat around the bush a little bit. I'm glad you told him don't be, because he will be brutally uh -huh. honest. And uh, but I, I think it's it's important to understand that you know once you leave that life, it, it, it's a process mm -hmm. you know that you have to go through, and it takes a while. Well, wasn't it a process to get in? That's a very good question, and and someone I'm not gonna say who on this panel here is probably gonna disagree with me. Um, this is my this is my humble opinion. I think it takes about two years, okay, you can tell who the person that disagree with me, <laughs> about two years to become a professional soldier. And what I mean by this is, okay, uh, basic training, advanced individual training, getting to your unit, and finally uh, embracing, I am a soldier, like in the U.S. Army, I am a soldier, I get it, mm -hmm. and I'm not a, knowledgeable about my job, I know my job. Now, on the flip side, you don't get that on the way out. Right. So, and, and like again, not, not knocking the military because they're focused on fighting and winning. Uh, so a veteran, and, not, and, and, and I hear a lot of people say it could be, well it's not. It's actually a life changing experience mm -hmm. coming out of active duty and trying to get back in the civilian world. So Easter Seals again, help in that transition because um, like a lot of veterans um, get smacked in the face like I did, like, wow, this is it. I have no uniform. I, ha I don't know what do people wear, you know? Right. You know, I had someone telling me what to wear, what time to be there, you know? And I can sleep in and still get paid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but. It's it's a different it's different in the civilian world. So and, and veterans has to understand that, and and it, it can be, as George said, as you can tell for uh, homeless vets that's out there, you know it can be, pretty a pretty uh, significant emotional event. Well, I I think that the anger management piece is probably valuable to more of society than than just veterans. Uh, I had to learn anger management from Eminem and Papa Roach. <laughs> they had an anger management tour, and I yeah. went to that concert, and it, it was awesome. But that, that's my only exposure to anger management. So, yeah. so did that help you with your anger, or did it create more? <laughs> I know he's pretty cool here, so I may have helped him. Yeah. So how about phase three? What's the, the how does that expand? So phase three is um, our veterans, um, unless that veteran, most of our vets that come through the program is um, focused, trying to focus on school, getting their education before they go into the job market. Um, with that said, the VA has a uh, return to work uh, program where they, um, they prep you, or uh, uh, job placement, I should say. Um, Easter Seals has the same program, so I think uh, uh, the VA uh, is using the analogies, we have that, you know, that, uh, that service is here for you, so you don't need to get it from, uh, from Easter Seals. Okay. So I think that's... That's the, uh, the difference in terms of, but if a veteran wants to go straight to work, we're not going to tell them you can't go to phase three. We are there to help, mm -hmm. and then we do job placement and job readiness, in, which is very, very important uh, because as a service member, we don't go on the interviews, you know? We don't. We just go to a duty station and they say, that's your office, go to work, <laughs> you know? But it's different when you have to sit down to conduct an interview, what questions do you, mm -hmm. you know you can and, and should not answer those things. In, in Easter Seals, we have two uh, job placement specialists, and they help our veterans in that department. Okay, so that's phase three, that basically. Is, that is phase three. Is uh, job 
readiness. Job placement. And job placement, okay. George, did you go through uh, phase two and phase three? That's a great question because I did not. Um, reason, and, I, and I wanted to make a, a point about that. Some of us move a little faster than others. God bless us, okay? That you can you pick up on some things. And that's, that's how I, I was. I was in uh, phase, phase one for, I guess, about three months before they, they made me move or told me I was ready to move on to phase two. Then while I was at phase two, I was already showing a lot of, um, I was being aggressive trying to find school or work or something mm -hmm. I want, that I wanted to do. So they were already helping me out. Uh, even though I was in phase two, I was already getting coaching at, at phase three level. Oh, okay, I see. So that's what I like about the program that you necessarily don't have to be there for the entire nine months. Mm -hmm. You move if, at your own pace. There you go. And I get, again, uh, as Steve says, you know, it, it, you, they slow you down so you have enough time to re, re, you know, react and find what really is going to work for you. So I call it pumping the brakes, you know, so I, I, I like that. Yeah. Oh, did we run over time? You got, I just wanted to let him finish his thought. And then okay. Go. Yeah. But yeah. That's all I had to say. Okay, there great. You go. Thanks. There you go. Yeah, uh, this is Todd Markport with uh, Talk Law Radio. We'll be right back. Law Talk Radio with Todd Marquardt is sponsored by the Marquardt Law Firm and does not attempt to solve your individual legal problems upon the basis of the information contained herein. Instead, contact an attorney to discuss the specific facts and circumstances of your unique situation. The views and opinions of this program do not reflect the views of the Salem Media Group. It's time for Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. Todd Marquardt, attorney at law in Texas. If you're a millionaire or a thousandaire, Talk Law Radio is now on the air. Call in with your business law question, your elder law question. Veteran aid, Medicaid, build a business to get paid. 210-308-8867. Or ask a question online at marquardtlawfirm.com. That's M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T lawfirm.com. And now, it's Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt. We're back with uh, Talk Law Radio with Todd Marquardt, uh, talking about Easter Seals, the New Beginnings program. And uh, George um, and Steve, remind, remind the listeners, how does a veteran get into the program? I'm going to let you address that, Steve. First, let me take a moment because uh, I'll get hit, hit upside the head if I don't give a shout out to all the Easter Seal staff and clients. Oh my, uh, battle buddies over there because if I don't, they're gonna talk about me when I go back. <laughs> but with that said, uh, again, the, the veteran uh, can get in contact with their folk rehab counselor and, and talk to them about Easter Seal or any program like Easter Seals. I'm not saying that Easter Seals or a New Beginning is the only program out there. There is a lot of other programs out there that uh, that can help vets. And again, it's just the fact that we don't know to ask for it. So the veterans can simply ask, I heard about this uh, New Beginning Easter Seals stuff on the radio. Uh, can, I, can I at least try it? And, uh, and, and that will get the ball rolling. Can they call? Yes, uh, you can call. And uh, I think I have a number here if the, I can. The number we have for uh, to provide is 210-614-3911 for more information or if you have questions about Easter Seals and the uh, New Beginnings program. Oh, if you just want to call and say hi to Steve, then that's fine. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that uh, the VA, the Veterans Administration, has a, a vocational counselor that is probably working with the veteran after uh, they get out of the service for one reason or another. And, and that counselor might refer them to Easter Seals. Are there other ways that people find out about Easter Seals and the New Beginning program? Yes, um, like what we're doing right now. 
you know, right, through, the radio. through the radio, um, word of mouth, through the grapevine. And that's important because, like for myself, I found out about the Easter Seals program through another battle buddy, like George said, had mentioned. And it was just, we're talking one day, and it's like, hey, you've been retired. What, you, what have you been doing? Oh, I go to this program called Easter Seals. What is Easter Seals? And they went on about how it has helped them you know what it's done for them since they've been out and it's like oh wow it's like you know why don't you just go talk to your vocational rehabilitation counselor that's how i was able to find it out but just think about the, the thousands of veterans that don't they don't know anything about this program at all there has to be a better way that we get this information out to the veterans i mean i was talking to george the other day and it was like you know you could be at the gas station pumping gas and you see a, a you know a dd plate and it's like hey you know, you're enjoying retirement, yeah, yeah, have you ever heard of Easter Seals? We have to start start speaking about this in the community so that we can get veterans the help that they need. You have an evangelist here. <laughs> She's ready to tell people. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and George, did you find out uh, through your uh, vocational rehab counselor? N no, uh, I did not. I, uh, a, f a friend, another battle buddy, told me about it, and uh, I, I brought it up to... <laughs> And this is funny, uh, I, I don't know in a ha-ha way, but I brought it up to my counselor, and he didn't know about it. Oh, wow. He did not know about it. So uh, he had to do some research, and he found out through another counselor. So there's, there lacks a certain amount of continuity in how we market some of the, mm -hmm. the, the programs we, we have to offer. And that's, that's one of my concerns and why I think that I'm going to be an asset uh, well, I'm going to try to be an asset to, to the program is that I'm going to try to where I'm going to end up being I hope uh, what they call a health coach uh, for the VA and in doing that process I'm going to if I'm going to tell people tell them, I'm going to, yeah I'm just going to tell the soldier uh, you know or the vet uh, go through your counselor or, or I'll give them that phone number call directly to them and they'll refer it to a counselor and tell them hey you know, this is this is uh, this is the program, and they they can start some sort of dialogue that way too. So the three of you are all retired, but yes. do you have to be retired and to qualify to be in this program, or could you just be like uh, uh, a military veteran that was discharged for medical reasons, or or just got out because they didn't want to do it anymore? Can they do this program as well? That, that is correct. And we have a lot of uh, veterans who did not uh, retire. You know, we have people who have done three, four, five years, and they're in the program. Uh, medical so, board. Uh, medical board, uh, and they're in the program. So it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you have to be retired. It's just simply said that you have to be a veteran to, uh, to have that program, or to at least uh, to see if that program will work for them. That's something you'll like to do. And some veterans might have some challenging disabilities, um, like PTSD. Is, is that okay? Can those type of veterans join this program even though they, they might have challenges during the classes? Well, I think you're looking at one right here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the great staff at, at Easter Seals understand that, you know, there are going to be times, there are going to be some veterans that is going to, that's a little, uh, that has more issues to deal with than others. And, and PTSD, for example, and I like to just cover the PTSD thing. Um, one other thing, in, in my case, I thought I was the only one dealing with PTSD. I thought I was the only one that had depression. I thought I was the only one that had that problem. And if I did share that problem, it would, have, it would make me look weak. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, so I, I, I hold that in. And when veterans come to the program and realize, wow, you know, this is, this is good stuff. There is 50 people, and I'm just throwing out numbers, in this classroom right here. And there is 10 of them that is going through the same thing that I am. So because you have PTSD doesn't mean that you can't be part of the program. That is what, that's why the program is there. Okay. It's to help you to deal with that stuff. Uh, so don't, don't think, oh, I have severe PTSD, so that's not the program for me. Don't think you're alone. Don't think you are alone, because you're not. 
before we move on to, to my last segment, is there anything else you want people to know about New Beginnings? Well, I like the veterans to understand, and, and I, I know about Easter Seals New Beginning, but I, I, I submit that there are other uh, programs out there that just know that there are people like Easter Seals, like New Beginning, who are there to help and they're willing to help, but they can't come to your house and get you. So you have to make that step, you have to, you have to get out there, but there are good staff that is willing and ready to help veterans deal with whatever issues that they're dealing with. And there is a lot of issues that, you know, <laughs> that us as veterans deal with. Well, I hope that our listeners will tell their friends and neighbors and family if there's any veteran out there that they know that Easter Seals might be a resource that will help them. You know that we do comprehensive and professional wills and trusts and estate planning, right Steve? And, so, and so uh, I like to ask our guests about their own legacy. So if you think about your own legacy, uh, God forbid, uh, we're all going to pass away from this earth. Uh, how would you want to be remembered? Man, I never thought of that question before. <laughs> uh, I think how I want to be re remembered is for someone who gave 100% in life, in just about everything he did, but through it all, remain humble because I think that is a very, very good attribute to have. Staying humble, because you can reach as high as you can go, but if you're not humble, then you can fly away. So you have to stay grounded, and you have to remain humble. That's a great quote. <laughs> <laughs> Tamika, do you have a legacy story you'd like to share? Yes, uh, if there was something that I could leave behind, some words of wisdom, it would be to always be kind always be kind uh, because you never know what someone is going through you know we walk past each other every single day and just a simple hello can change someone's day uh, we always hear about you know um, on the news and statistics and all of these reports they're always telling us you know veterans committing suicide is at a high rate you know just sometimes people just want someone just to talk to them you know you know I learned that from watching Seinfeld <laughs> they have the episode where uh, Jerry's uncle says, you could have said hello. <laughs> How about you, George? Do you have a legacy story you'd like to share? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to be remembered and giving back to, to my community and, and, uh, and to continue to give to the vets, you know, because I uh, through all the years, you know, you, you don't automatically become a soldier. It takes a little bit of time, like Steve says, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy giving back to the soldiers. Well, I think all three of you have already done a lot. Uh, you may hear it all the time, but Tyrone and I want to thank you for your service. We didn't go. We didn't serve. Okay. We appreciate those that did and do. So thank you. Well, thank you for having us, and thank you for supporting the vets, and thank you for giving us this medium that we can uh, get the word out to vets and, and understand, let vets know that you're not alone in this fight. Can you, you know, repeat the phone number? They're willing out there that's going to help you deal with the journey as you try to uh, navigate through it. So you can call Steve at 210 614 three nine one one and find out more about easter seals new beginning program uh, we'll see you next week thanks <laughs>